Update on the Jeep LT swap. Um, I've got it running. I have, uh, I had to take the Jeep ECU out. I sent it to MoTeC to get it um, completely cleared of all codes, not just cleared, but the codes removed, which you can't do with a handheld scanner. Um, I don't have HT tuner software on my um, computer. Uh, I do have a buddy that's got it. I, I trust him a lot, but I'm probably gonna end up using him for helping me with the GM ECU if I have any problems there. So the way that works, you have to buy credits from uh, HP to be able to access a computer. It was two credits, 50 bucks a credit, just to get into the Jeep ECU. I'm gonna have uh, MoTeC take care of that business. Uh, I've got the wiring done, 90% of it cleaned up. Uh, I'd like to do something a little bit different with my battery terminals as there were some accessories. Some of them were added before I got the Jeep. And, uh, but for the most part, that's good. I've got the refrigerant hose on. I, I kinked one up pretty bad, so I had to do some repairs. Um, I'm gonna vacuum it down tomorrow. Obviously, um, with the GPCU out, I can't start it and run it, so I won't be able to fill that up and check it, but at least I can put vacuum on it and make sure that it's not gonna leak. I've got um, coolant in it. I've got just everything else is done. It just uh, it really needs exhaust, it needs the coast clear. It needs the door put on, uh, that door. I have, um, and I haven't put on because if you look, I've got my lift right here and the door wants to bang on the lift and it's hard to work in there. But I've got the interior wiring done. It really wasn't too big of, bad of a deal. Most of it was um, just cleaning it up and wrapping it up and making it where it was, it wasn't dangling down by your feet or getting hung up in the brake. Um, neat little package, uh, the way that project works. So pros and cons so far. The biggest con uh, that I had, and I've said it two or three times, was the exhaust was not included with the um, with the, the kit, even though I had it on the website. Not much I can do with that. I bought it. I didn't ask enough questions. Uh, you need a 2012 power steering pump and or different brackets other than MoTeC brackets to mount the steering pump. By the time I looked at diff buying different brackets, I could buy a, a cheap pump. Probably what I paid for. At some point, I can change it. The good news is, is that there's room inside there to do that. Um, pardon all the noise, it's super windy outside, and my doors are right in my shop. Um, getting the back door of the air conditioning lines on were a little bit of a pain in the butt. I kind of did it backwards. Um, hook it to the AC condenser before you run them, and it makes it a lot easier. It is kind of tight up there in the front. I've got a power steering, or not a power steering, I've got a radiator hose that's really close. Um, and I had to do some different stuff with that because the hoses that I got weren't exactly, even though they were part of the kit or the ones they told me that they were customer supply, which I bought, the, I don't like the bins. I'm probably gonna end up doing something different there, but it's it's good enough. I can get it driving, make sure I can work out all the rest of the details. Um, other than that, uh, I did not know that I was gonna take the Jeep ECU and clear it. I'm sure that somewhere along the lines, it was probably mentioned I did the order online, I didn't ask any questions, and even though I had been talking to him back and forth for two years on getting this project going, I guess I didn't ask the right questions. So my advice, if you decide you're gonna go this way, and I, I advise it, it's a good kit, um, ask questions, call him up, get all the details, because I send emails back and forth, hey, what do I need to buy? And I was working a lot of overtime, so I was buying the stuff that I needed um, in advance before buying the kit and putting it on the shelf and labeling it and organizing it and making it nice and neat. I would have went ahead and bought um, either aftermarket exhaust or went ahead and budgeted for that. And I would have had a uh, power steering pump here ready to go. Um, I didn't ask enough questions. Also, when I got the kit, I got part of it the day on Christmas Eve on Saturday, which was odd. And then I got the rest of it on Monday. Well, they, Botech was off on Monday and I, that, I'm off that week every year between Christmas and New Year's and that was the whole intent was to work on this project. So I didn't get any instructions and there wasn't nobody to answer the phone or respond to my email. So I did a bunch of this uh, utilizing the Jeep JL JK swap page on Facebook and my buddies and YouTube. Uh, I came back in on Monday after, or actually Tuesday after um, January 1, January 3rd, I guess, and they sent me instructions, which helped, but I was beyond a lot of that other than the wiring. Um, 
The wiring is really simple. There's two wires in the dash. The dash is really easy to take apart. And there are three wires under the hood that you got to solder. Other than that, all the rest of the stuff is plug and play. Um, putting on the engine harness was really a piece of cake. Um, everything was labeled, everything was there. I did make a mistake. Uh, I, we put all the harness on. I had the starter off to get to the, um, I don't remember, it's a dock sensor. There's a sensor behind there and it's hard to get on. And when I put the starter on, I did not snap and clip the starter wire on. So when I did finally get around to wanting to start it the first night, did not do nothing. And I ended up calling and pretty much the Robbie, the guy at Motex, said, hey man, your starter wire is off. You need to check that, either that or you broke it. I got a crawl underneath there, reached up there, snapped that thing on and it fired right up. Um, definitely because I took the body off um, the first week of November and then I didn't start working on it until the last week of December. Uh, I did have everything nice and neat and labeled, all the bolts, which a lot of them you don't end up using. But I didn't take pictures under the hood where things plugged in, like the ABS um, plug. And uh, lo and behold, I forgot to plug that one in as well. I caught that one, um, still didn't start because the starter water wire was off. Um, other than that, really, it's, it's, it hasn't been a big deal. Um, my, my motor came with almost everything, and I went ahead and bought stuff, so I got like, spare coolant lines, which you have to cut those down anyway. I wish I would have just not done that, but I wanted to have everything here. I did buy an accelerator pedal, didn't need it, so I, if anybody needs an accelerator pedal, I have one. Um, and I've got a, leftover, a lot of leftover parts. Uh, on Gene's Jeep or JL, we had changed our front drive shaft and made a double carding, and, uh, which means two sets of U-joints on one side. And because uh, Jeep uses an R Zeppa weird um, coupling to, and they go bad really quick, especially if you put a lift kit in it. And uh, so anyway, I was able to utilize her front drive shaft for this because it did move back maybe, maybe an inch. I utilized the rear drive shaft. Drive shafts were originally in my budget, uh, but not for immediate. I want to go through and start driving it. It is going to be my driver. I'm going to obviously check and chase and whatever little bugs I got until there are no bugs. And then at that point in time, I'll order a drive shaft to do what I need to do. Uh, but my objective now is to get it 50 state compliant, which I'm working with uh, my buddy Chris Hamilton to get the exhaust guy going. Uh, if not, I've got a backup guy down at Burleson um, that had expressed interest in doing it. Um, I've got um, the O2 sensors. I have not, I'm not deleting anything on the GM motor. It will be as the motor was in the truck with the catalytic converters and all of the emission stuff, all of the EVAP, all of that stuff is general motors. So I'm looking forward to having a 50 state compliant vehicle that I can get inspected, not have to worry about, and go. So. There will be another update once I get going and we'll start chasing whatever little bugs we have and we'll go from there. Uh, I do gotta, I gotta clean my shop. <laughs> That's on the, on the list for tomorrow. And I gotta get a vacuum on this uh, AC system. So that's where we're at.